Hi guys, it's Ben Heath from Lead Guru, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can get out of Facebook's Learning Limited. If you see Learning Limited pop up as a warning alongside your ad sets, you might be thinking, that doesn't sound good, how do I fix it? How do I get out of Learning Limited? That's what this video is gonna be all about. I'm gonna walk you through a number of methods that you can use to get out of Learning Limited. Now, before I get into that, I wanna very quickly ask you to smash that like button and subscribe to my channel if you're new. I release Facebook advertising related content all the time. If that's something you're into, if that's something that's gonna help your business, I strongly recommend you go ahead and subscribe. Okay, with that said, what I've done is I've brought up the, um, I'm in Facebook's Business Help Center and I've got the Learning Limited page up because they recommend a number of strategies for getting out of Facebook's Learning Limited. That's what I'm gonna talk about. But what I'm gonna do is talk about whether they work, which ones you do and don't want to do. It's not simple as just go ahead and, and follow all of them. Before I get into that, I wanna very quickly mention what Learning Limited is and explain it. So Learning Limited is where your Facebook ad campaign, or actually it's normally done at the ad set level, where your ad set has not generated enough optimization events in order for Facebook to have enough data to fully optimize the ad set. So what's an optimization, optimization event? It's whatever it is that you are asking Facebook for. So an optimization event could be a link click if you're running a traffic campaign. It could be a video view if you're running a video views campaign. Um, of course, most of the time, it's going to be a conversion event, something like lead purchases that's triggered via your website. If you're running a traffic campaign, a video view campaign, these very very rarely end up in Learning Limited because it's very easy to generate 50 or more optimization events per week with those campaign objectives. With a conversion campaign, particularly if you're optimizing for purchases or leads or something that's lower down your funnel, which is what I'd recommend, by the way, and I'll include a link in the video description to uh, a video talking more about that, about the conversion events you want to use, um, then it, it may not be possible or it may be very difficult for you to reach 50 conversions. There's lots of, I see comments all the time from people saying things like, I don't generate 50 purchases a week or even close to it. I'm in Learning Limited. What should I do about it? So, so that's what Learning Limited is about. It's, it's an inability to get out of the learning phase. Whenever you launch a new ad set or make a significant adjustment to an ad set, it goes through the learning phase. I'll include a link in the video description to more information about the learning phase. And if you don't generate those 50 or so, it's not exact, those 50 or so um, optimization events, usually conversions within, let's say, a week, you're usually going to end up in learning limited. Um, and, you know, and that's what's going to, and, and that can potentially cause issues. That's what the learning Learning limit is on Facebook. Right, so that's basically what Facebook's explaining up here. Now, here they have this troubleshoot section. This is the really interesting part. There are multiple ways to fix learning limited ad sets to improve performance. Now, I find that very interesting. Facebook's talking about learning limited as though it's something that needs to be fixed. Okay, you can make adjustments to get out of learning limited, but it's not necessarily something that needs to be fixed as in it's broken if your ad set is in Learning Limited. There are many businesses that are never going to generate more than 50 optimization events per week, and that's absolutely fine, and they can advertise on Facebook, and they can succeed. If you're a very high-end service provider, for example, you might only want five leads a week because 50 would be way too many. You know, you only work with a handful of clients every year. If it's big project-based work, we've got a number of clients like that. Really big project-based work. Um, each project's going to be hundreds of thousands of dollars, maybe even millions. They might only do two or three in a year. Think of like the design and build industry and things like that, right? Um, they don't want 50 leads a week. That would be way too many. So you can run campaigns perfectly well with ad sets that are in Learning Limited. That's the first thing I want to, to really talk about Learning Limited. It's not this, the campaign will not perform unless you get out of Learning Limited. Facebook kind of make it out like it is. It's not the case. You have to prioritize your business's objectives over the optimization of a Facebook ad campaign. I get questions from people all the time saying, asking things like, I've run out of stock, should I turn my campaigns off? I'm worried that that's gonna mess up Facebook's delivery systems. Like, well, if you're out of stock or nearly out of stock, yes, turn them off. It's more important that you prioritize that stuff over the Facebook's delivery mechanisms and machine learning process being as optimized as possible. And that absolutely applies to Learning Limited. If it makes sense for your business to only get 10 conversions per week, you will be in Learning Limited and that is absolutely fine. OK, so that's the first thing I wanted to, to highlight is you can operate well within Learning Limited. Don't feel like it has to be something that you fix. That being said, with all things being equal, a campaign that is got the active notice alongside your ad set, as opposed to Learning Limited, is usually going to perform better. You're going to get a lower cost per conversion. 
Okay. Um, right. The first, let, let, let's let's go through these in order because I think these are these are really interesting. The first thing I'll talk about is combining ad sets and campaigns. So, for example, if you've got two or three different campaigns running, if you've got um, you know three or four different ad sets within a campaign, Facebook would recommend that you effectively bundle those into one campaign or one ad set. And that can certainly help. Why does it help? Larger audiences definitely helps you get out of Learning Limited. So if in doubt, a larger audience, and that's one of the first things we'll check. If we see Learning Limited, we go, okay, what's the audience size? Can we increase this? Yes, it's 200,000. Right, can we get that up to 800,000? Can we, you know, it's, it's 400,000 right now. Can we get that up to 2 million, for example? Again, I'll include a link in the video description below to another video talking all about ideal audience size, because that's an important thing to be aware of and, and to know about. So it can help in terms of combining audiences. It can help in terms of making your audiences larger. And also what you're doing is you're centralizing the budget. So instead of, say, having, I don't know, let's say you're spending $100 a day. If that's split across three different ad sets, we're going to generate less conversions in each ad set. Whereas if you obviously put all 100 into that one ad set, there's more likely you're going to get more conversion events within that ad set. Therefore, it's more likely to get out of the learning phase and you'll see Facebook's learning limited warning disappear. So yes, it will help and it will help your performance, but you have to weigh up the pros and cons of being able to test. Now, I'm a big fan of, say, using one interest per ad set because then you can accurately see exactly how that interest performs and that allows you to make adjustments going forward. So if, say, you've got four interests you want to target and let's say that, you know, three of them perform not so great and one does really well, well, then you could just focus on that one that does really well. If you combine them all into one ad set, you're going to get a blended average. You'll never know which one performs the best. So combining ad sets and campaigns can help you get out of Learning Limited and help you in the short run because it'll help improve your performance. But does it hurt you in the long run because you don't have as accurate data with which to optimize your ad sets, turn off ad sets? So what I would usually recommend is don't do that. Don't combine ad sets and campaigns to get out of Facebook's Learning Limited initially when you're testing lots of different targeting options and trying to find those great options. But once perhaps you've got targeting options that you know work really well, you've tested them extensively, and you're more into a phase where you're testing, say, ad creative, and you want to combine at that point, then yes, you can do so if you're stuck in Learning Limited and want to see the effect you'll have getting out of that. That's the first one. Second one is expand the audience. This we already touched on. It's one of the advantages you get from combining ad sets and campaigns, but larger audiences um, basically help with all of Facebook's machine learning processes. They just have more options, more data, more testing to do. You also um, usually will generate more conversions if you've got a larger audience than a smaller one. Obviously, there are exceptions like retargeting audiences, but that's something that's an easy go-to, and that would often be one of our absolute first. Like There are downsides to combining um, ad sets and campaigns that I've just outlined. Expanding your audience is yeah, not really any downside to doing that. You can go ahead and do it. So easy ways to do that would be things like turning on detailed targeting expansion. I've got a video on that if you're interested. Um, it would be using a higher percentage lookalike audience. If you've got a 1%, change that to a 3%, something like that. Uh, maybe it's targeting more countries. Perhaps it's using broader interests. Lots of different ways you can do that. Okay. Right. The next one, number three, raise your budget. So that is by far the most effective way to exit Learning Limited is to increase your budget. If you increase your budget enough, you will almost certainly generate more than 50 optimization events per week and you will get out of Learning Limited. Sounds like a simple fix. Now, there's obviously massive downsides with raising your, well, well I should say massive potential downsides with raising your budget. Can you afford to do so? Do you have the ability to deliver on those products or services? When you scale, when you increase your budget, that very often is accompanied, at least initially, by an increase in cost per conversion. So let's say your campaigns are profitable right now, but stuck in Learning Limited. If you go and triple or 4x your budget, yes, you might get out of Learning Limited, but that might result in the campaigns no longer being profitable. So I don't like raising budget just to get out of Learning Limited. I think you want to be raising budget for other reasons as well, like the campaign's doing well and you're wanting to scale. And I'll include a link to another video all about scaling. Um, the strongly recommend you go through it, shows you how to exactly how to do it budget-wise. If you're interested, like really check that out. Again, link will be in the video description. Lots of links, but I'm trying to be as, as helpful as possible. Um, I think you want to be raising budget for other reasons as well, not just Learning Limited, because I think the overall... 
um, difference to your campaign by just raising budget and often having to do so significantly to get out of Learning Limited is just not worth it, okay? You have to weigh these things up in terms of pros and cons, right? If your campaign performs, let's say, 15 to 20% better by not being in Learning Limited, okay, that sounds good. But if it performs, if your cost per purchase doubles because you're now spending three times as much and you didn't do it in a nice stepped approach, you're, you're net worse off by doing that. And I think that's part of the reason, if I'm being a bit cynical, a bit sceptical, why Facebook introduced the Learning Limited warning and why they talk about it as being a problem that needs to be fixed is because they're trying to encourage you to raise your budget. Obviously, you do that, Facebook makes more money. You know, there's 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 incentive there that's that's fairly obvious. Um, if the reason why your ad sets are in learning limited, and you're say generating thirty optimization events per week, thirty conversions, don't go and double your budget just to get out of learning limited. Do it in a proper approach. Scale the campaigns for other reasons as well, like you have capacity and they're doing well, and you want to spend more, and you want more purchases or more leads or whatever. Okay, that's really important. Um, raise your bid or cost control. That is absolutely one I'd recommend that you do do. Um, either, to be honest, if you're stuck in learning limited, I would usually look to just remove bid caps, cost caps and things like that in general. I'm not a huge fan because they do get in the way of Facebook's machine learning process, Facebook's delivery systems. If I'm going to use a cost cap or a bid cap or something like that, I will usually look to do so after my campaign, well, the ad set specifically, has already gotten out of the learning phase, it's already gotten out of learning limited, um, and it's just active and running properly, and then we look to introduce it, because at the beginning, your, let's say, cost per conversion is going to fluctuate a lot, you're going to see a lot of variation, and yeah, having learning limited, in, having, sorry, a cost cap in there, just makes it more likely that that process is going to be interrupted, which I absolutely don't want, makes it more likely you're going to get stuck in learning limited, um, so yeah, just... It's easy, especially during that first week or two, to not run bid caps or cost caps or remove them if you already have um, them in there. Okay, and then the fifth one um, is change your optimization event. Now, what that would be for an example would be, let's say you're optimizing for purchases and you're generating 25 purchases per week. You're still in Learning Limited. You haven't quite been able to get out of it. You're not generating the 50 you need. So you change to add to cart because let's say you look in your ad account and you generate three add to carts for every one purchase. Great. So you're generating 75 add to carts per week um, or 25 purchases. So you think, fantastic, I'll be out of learning limited if I optimize for add to carts. I'm not a big fan of making this adjustment. Yes, your campaign will be able to fully optimize if you get out of learning limited and optimize for add to carts, but your campaign is then fully optimizing for something that at the end of the day you don't really want. I mean, of course, you want add to carts, but it's not what you really want. You really want purchases. So you could have a campaign that is fully optimized and brilliant at generating ad to carts. Or you can have a campaign that is, say, partially optimized. It's not like Facebook won't optimize your campaigns if it's in Learning Limited. Of course they will. They just can't quite do it as well. Um, partially optimized campaigns going for exactly what you want, like purchases, in my experience, nearly always outperform fully optimized campaigns going for something like ad to carts. It's like, you know, do you want someone who's absolutely brilliant, as good as they can possibly be, but they're going after something that's not really the objective? You're just hoping that as a side you get the objective? Or do you want someone that's perhaps not quite as good, who's just absolutely dead on what you want? I think you want the person going exactly for what you want, and the same applies to, to Facebook ad campaigns, okay? Um, I think if you want to experiment with changing optimization event, that's fine. But don't be surprised if, for example, you're currently generating, let's do the three to one example, 75 add to carts per week, 25 purchases per week when you have a conversions campaign optimizing for purchases. Let's say you go ahead and optimize for add to carts instead. You might go from 75 um, add to carts per week all the way up to, say, 125 add to carts per week. But you may end up seeing less purchases. We see that happen all the time because Facebook is very, very good at getting you what it is that you're after, what it is that you want. Um, so hopefully that's given you some ideas on how you can get out of Learning Limited and not just some ideas, but also some context around which ones you do want to do and when and which ones you don't want to do. Very important. You don't just want to, okay, I'll just go through all this list. I'll combine all the ad sets. I'll make my audiences larger. I'll 3x my budget. I'll get rid of all cost caps. I'll change my optimization event. Yeah, that's going to get you out of Learning Limited, but it might absolutely wreck the performance of your campaigns. You might be just disastrous in terms of other things that you do. Okay, so 
just be very careful. Other thing I want to mention about Learning Limited is it's very often inaccurate. So we've got, I can go into clients' ad accounts right now and take a look at ad sets that have 500 conversions and generate well more than 50 per week that are in Learning Limited or say they're in Learning Limited. No idea why. And the flip side, I, we've got ad sets, you, you know, you, sometimes you see it's got seven purchases in their total and it says active and you're like, right. So it, it's quite an inaccurate I think in general, it's useful to know and certainly helpful and certainly something that you might want to address in the ways that I've described. Don't treat it like it's the devil and just change everything in order to get out of Learning Limited. But it's not this like everything needs to change. Everything needs to be done to get out of it. It's not the, the disaster that people think it is that I see from comments and things like that. OK, that's um, something I really wanted to talk about. So, you know, go through those, make the adjustments that I've talked about, not the ones I haven't. And I think you're going to have overall better campaigns. And at the end of the day, don't panic if you are stuck in Learning Limited. It's not the end of the world by any means. OK, before you go, a couple of things I want to mention. The first is that my company, Lead Guru, is a Facebook ads agency um, and we provide done for you services for clients. So we create, manage and optimize Facebook and Instagram ad campaigns. And um, we have a minimum budget requirement for our clients of so 3K per month. But if you meet that criteria, you can absolutely go ahead and book a free call with one of my team members. Just click on the, again, another link in the video description below um, where you can just be taken through to our website. You can book a call. We can just completely, no obligation, informal, just find out more about your business. You can find out about our services, what we charge, all that sort of stuff. And um, yeah, hopefully we'll have a chance to work together and hopefully we'll be able to get you much better results. Uh, because of that. Other thing I want to mention, which is fairly new, is that I've added um, YouTube channel membership options. So you can now become a member of my channel um, and members get certain advantages, right? So you'll see that down below next to the subscribe button, there's a join button. Uh, and I said members get certain advantages. So um, I'm now getting so many comments on my videos in total, which is fantastic. I'm really appreciative of that, that I'm just not able to, to get to them all. So I'm going to be prioritizing member comments okay so if you become a member i can see exactly you know i can filter for member comments and i can take a look and i can answer um those first i will of course try and engage and interact with comments from people who aren't members but that's one of the advantages they get is they're going to have priority over that and i know that often you guys have questions for me that are really important might make a big difference to your business so i'm absolutely going to do my best to um to answer those and you also get to participate in member only polls so i'm going to be asking my members what sort of video topics they want me to create things around. So if there's a particular feature like, oh, I really want you to talk about, you know, the conversions API or something like Learning Limited, for example, then that's absolutely fine. That That's really useful information. You can have a say in that sort of stuff. And then as well, you know, I've had lots of people over the years of doing this, thousands probably, definitely hundreds, people saying, I really appreciate the work you do. The videos have really helped me in my business. How can I, you know, pay it back? How can I help? Well, becoming a member is absolutely a way that you can go and do that. I said, you can click on the join button. You'll see that for a relatively small monthly fee, you can become um, a member. It's got all the details in there. And um, yeah, if you want to support the channel, help me dedicate more time to creating content, then that's a that's a great way to, to go about doing it. I would be much appreciated. Of course, if you don't, that's absolutely fine as well. You know, very happy for you to keep watching my videos and, and commenting and being involved. And I'll do my best to, you know, still engage and all that sort of stuff. But that is now... Um, an option. So I wanted to let you guys know about it because I did that in fairly uh, fairly recently. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Um, as I said, comment below whether you become a member or not. Go ahead and pop the comments. Let me know what you think about this. Always after feedback on my videos. Um, please hit that thumbs up button. That really helps me out. And of course, subscribe to my channel um, if you haven't done so already. Release Facebook and Instagram advertising content all the time. And um, yeah, I'll talk to you soon. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye for now.